Hey, what's up guys, Come back to Chain with Tips. So we're starting a new series and we're talking about reciprocating saw blades, all right? So uh, everybody knows uh, the tool is only as good as the blade on them and if you're using a good tool, don't you want to be using a good blade? All right, so we're going to try to go and figure out which one of these blades really are the best, all right? So back in the day, Milwaukee Tool Company invented the uh, reciprocating saw, or better known as a sawzall. It's kind of like a synonym. It's almost like, you know, hey, give me the skill saw. It's a circular saw, even it may not be the skill saw brand type deal, right? So anyways, the point is uh, reciprocating saws are used a lot regardless of whatever type of trade you're in or whatever in the world that you're doing, you're probably using a reciprocating saw or you have a reciprocating saw, okay? Uh, they can cut through all types of material. Now they have blades on them that can cut through almost virtually anything, all right? So uh, one of the uh, tools that's used the most on a remodel or a demo type deal is gonna be a reciprocating saw. So we're gonna try to find out which blade really is the best. And to kick it off, we're gonna start it with uh, the axe blade. We have two right here, the Milwaukee axe. This is the one with uh, carbide. Then we have another Milwaukee axe without carbide. So we're gonna use those two to kick off the series and then we're gonna test a whole bunch of other reciprocating saw blades and stuff like that, see which ones really stand up to the hype. So you don't wanna miss this, stick with us. So this is the Sawzall The Axe 5 TPI blade that comes in all types of sizes. But basically, they engineered the axe blade with carbide teeth to deliver extreme blade life and unmatched versatility. The Sawzall blade is the best solution for thick and extreme wood cutting applications. The axe delivers up to 50 times the life of standard reset blades. That, that's a big claim that let's try to figure out, you know, what type of blades they're talking about, standard blades they're talking about later. Um, the heavy duty blade cuts through a wide variety of metals, including material, nail embedded wood, duralock, plaster, shingles. Each blade has up to 25 more carbide than the leading competitors and features the nail guard to rip nails without ripping the teeth. Optimized tooth design uh, ensures the torch blade delivers extreme life in wood cutting applications. That seems like an error on the Milwaukee site because now they're talking about the torch, which is really designed for metal cutting applications, whereas this is really on their axe marketing hype, okay? Uh, this blade stays sharp and consistent carbide teeth. It has the fang tip for fast plunging and this blade is made in the USA. All right, so let's take a closer look at these blades, all right? We'll start with the bimetal one. So this is obviously the axe. Uh, it's designed obviously for nail embedded wood or let's say fastener embedded wood. Uh, this is made in the great US of A by the Milwaukee company uh, for the Sawzalls, all right? And this is the nine inch version of the blade. This blade comes in all different uh, sizes uh, and regardless of whichever size you get it in, they're all gonna be five TPI, okay? The nine inch version model number is 5026 and it's got the standard uh, recip uh, insert as a, as a blade design. It's pretty much what you would expect. Uh, the thing going in on here, you see right here, this right here is the fang tip. Uh, this fang tip actually works really well when you're trying to do a plunge cut. Um, so, you know, if you're doing a lot of plunge cuts, that's this is probably going to be a good blade for you, all right? Uh, the thing to take away from here is you see, you know, all the blades are equally spaced apart. This little part right here, uh, this little nub right here that sticks out is what they call the nail guard. And the, the basic idea behind that is if you have a nail here and as the blade's coming across, the little bump actually bumps the blade up a little bit. I'm exaggerating it, it you know, aggressively here, uh, such that the force of the blade being dragged across the fastener or whatever material you're cutting isn't gonna dull out this uh, leading edge as badly, okay? That's the basic idea behind this. Um, it, it seems to work generally pretty well, I would say, um, but you know, obviously these blades are gonna be moving, you know, very fast, so it doesn't look like it would do a lot, but actually does help quite a bit, okay? So, now let's go take a look at the blade offset or the teeth offset, so if you look at it, just the right angle, you can see the teeth offset is actually very, very aggressive. And as you would imagine, uh, this blade will probably cut really fast, uh, seeing you know how aggressive the teeth offset is. So uh, there's that. Let's go take a look at the carbide one. So this is the carbide version of the axe, you know, for nail embedded wood, the axe, uh, carbide teeth. This is also made in the US of A and by the Milwaukee company. And this is the nine inch version, just like that one. And this one is also available in all different, you know, length and sizes, but the nine inch version is 5226. And this is the five TPI version. It's a pretty standard, uh, you know, blade as you would imagine, uh, or insert for the, for 
Sawzall tool, as you would imagine here, okay? Uh, this one, this axe with carbide teeth is also have all the teeth equally spaced out apart, okay? And uh, this one also has the nail guard, which is a little bit more visible here because you see the carbide that's sticking out right here. And right in front of the carbide, you see this little bump right here, which is designed to push uh, the blade up a little bit, just enough that you don't drag and shear this carbide off of this uh, of this blade here. So that's the basic design of the nail guard. Um, just like the you know bimetal version of the axe blade, this one also has you know the fang tip. This fang tip I would say is a little bit more aggressive, right? It's a little bit thicker because it's got the carbide on it. So if you're just doing you know straight up wood cutting, this one will definitely work better. Um, this one you know still works well, but it's not as sharp as this one, you know. But sometimes as you're using it, it'll dull out pretty fast. So uh, that's what's really going in on here. And like I mentioned, um, they're both made in the USA. Uh, so let's talk about price here. So this price uh, for this carbide tooth version is roughly around $9.99, let's say about 10 bucks. This one is about five bucks, okay? Um, they're all available in all kinds of kits, assortments and stuff like that. You can get trial offers, you know, buy two of these or something like that for the price of one and all kinds of stuff. But basically, generally, the thing you really wanna take away is on average, uh, the carbide one is about 10 bucks a blade and the uh, non-carbide one is right around four or five bucks a blade, okay? That's what I uh, really need to take away from this. So is that price difference worth it? Well, let's go find out.
All right, so let's go take a look at some of the damage done to the blades while doing the cutting, all right? So as you can see here, uh, some of the teeth have been rounded over, um, as you would imagine, uh, because this doesn't have like carbide or anything attached to it. The teeth just get rounded over just like that, and that's how it really prevents cutting, okay? So you could probably get away with cutting, you know, some soft wood or some material with this, but it's just gonna be, you know, tearing away the wood instead of cutting the wood. But at this point, you know, uh, you're not really gonna be getting a lot of uh, life out of this blade, okay? So let's go ahead and underlay, let's just say, the new blade, the exact new blade, and see, you know, what the difference really looks like. So as you can see here, the teeth have really been rounded over and you're not gonna be getting really anything out of this, okay? Um, you know, the, the teeth offset is still uh, a little bit aggressive, right? But it's not gonna be anywhere nearly as dramatic because the pointy parts have obviously been, you know, rounded over. All right, so uh, you didn't really get too far with this blade. Let's go take a look at the carbide teeth blade. So with the carbide teeth blade, um, you know, it's gonna be a lot more dramatic in terms of the sharp edges, mainly because the carbide parts have been torn off or uh, taken off of, of the blade, right? So you're really seeing, you know, it's been completely rounded over there. Um, obviously, you know, the offset isn't gonna seem as dramatic because you're missing part of it, right? So let's go ahead and look at the uh, brand new blade versus the old blade. And as you can see here, or a burnt blade, um, it's pretty dramatic. You're not getting anything, right? You're not really getting anything, you're just tearing it away. So, and that's the damage done to the blade. Uh, hopefully you know that helps. Let's go take a better look at the numbers. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and talk about the test and then we'll talk about numbers, right? So as you already saw, uh, the saw that we used was Metabo HPT 36 volt multi-volt reciprocating saw, orbital off, we use a four amp hour battery um, and we use it on the highest speed uh, available. And then uh, the way that we ran the test was we had a 10 pound drop weight tied to the front of the reciprocating saw. That way, you know, it's just letting it rip and that's all we're really happening, okay? And most of the people who watch, you know, the uh, reciprocating uh, series know that that's one of the top best saws especially for the price you just can't beat it so uh, we're gonna repeat all the tests in the series the same way same saw all that kind of stuff okay so uh, let's get to it all right so the way that we ran the test uh, was the same way we run the test on the reciprocating saws right which is you know something more real world like so two by uh, or let's say header material so I think it was like two two by eights uh, you know with the uh, OSB sandwich in between and then we had uh, 16d uh, nails about every uh, one inch apart, okay? Uh, it's, you know, as close as we're gonna make it to, you know, real world, right? So, um, so every time it cuts through all the way one time, it's really 12 nails, um, but you know, because the blade only moves about like an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, whatever it is, um, you, the blades, that part of the blade's really only cutting through, you know, uh, one or half of it, let's just say, okay? You know, but, all that stuff really doesn't matter right now. So uh, we do all that, we let it run. So when it slices all the way through once, that's 12 nails cutting through. And then to accelerate the wear, because we don't wanna be here all day cutting, you know, like 5,000 nails or whatever, uh, we moved on to doing the same test with drywall screws because drywall screws are incredibly hard. And if you're doing, you know, remodels, or even if you, you know, just any stuff, you're probably gonna run into nails, if not drywall, or screws, if not drywall screws, okay? So uh, drywall screws are gonna accelerate the wear really fast. So with that being explained, let's get into it. So first with the Axe Bimetal Blade, we ran the test on the uh, 16D framing nails. Uh, it sliced through three times perfectly fine, uh, cut all 36 nails and average was about 10.42 seconds. Then we moved on to the drywall screws and the blade got burnt immediately, all right? So it failed on the first slice. Um, it got through maybe about five screws um, and then, you know, the rest of them just did not finish, okay? So, uh, you know, we're gonna be using the total number of fasteners cut to as a total performance score. Um, and now we're gonna look at, you know, does the carbide really make a difference? Let's go find out. So same blade with carbide, a uh, 16D framing nails, uh, ran three times, cut through all 36. Average of, you know, the three runs was about 12.48 seconds. Um, and then we went to the drywall uh, screws test. First run, 16.82, and the second run, 22.77. Third run, it did finish, but you know, it pretty much got burned on the, let's say the last two screws, okay? So about 59.62 um, to get through that. The total number of fasteners that, you know, uh, cut is gonna be used at total form score and the bimetal one cut a total number of 41 fasteners. That's uh, 36 nails and uh, the rest of them are drywall screws, okay? And then the carbide tooth one cut through uh, all 36 nails and, you know, 
most of the drywall screws. So uh, if you add that up, let's just say we're cutting it about 70. Uh, so about 70 fasteners cut with the carbide tooth versus 41 uh, with the bimetal one, okay? So uh, that's the, what the numbers really say. What can we say about these blades, all right? That's what you really wanna know. So, you know, if you look at it, the uh, if you're only cutting nails, then the bimetal one will probably get you pretty far, right? But in the course of a day, if you're gonna you know, cut through nails or whatnot, you know, the carbide tooth is definitely gonna get you further. Uh, you know, is it worth two times the cost? Only you can really answer that. Uh, if you're cutting through anything hard like screws, you definitely want the carbide one, because as you can see in the test, the bimetal ones just didn't go anywhere. But the carbide ones definitely got a lot further, okay? So, you know, you're gonna say two times the price. Is it really worth it? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say yes, because the thing that really sucks the most, and a lot of people may agree with me, um, when you're doing something, whatever it is, that it doesn't matter what you're doing, and whatever you're using just doesn't work, like the blade's dull, the tool is unreliable, whatever it is, just it's probably one of the most annoying things, right? Because you know if you had a good blade, or if you had a good tool, or you know, whatever, it'll just get that task done quickly. So in my opinion, um, getting the carbide one is definitely worth it, especially just, just for that, you know, peace of mind, you don't know what you're gonna cut through, that's the one you wanna get, okay? So uh, anyways, hope you helped you guys out. Uh, we're gonna test a whole bunch of other reciprocating saw uh, blades in the future, so you don't wanna miss this. If you have any question like that, let us know. Oh, this video is not sponsored. Milwaukee did not send any of this thing to us. We did purchase this with our own monies and gotta throw that in there. So have a great day, get back to work, and we'll see you guys next time.